Kami sepakat bahwa komunikasi saling kunjung antar uh, anggota Parlemen Indonesia dan Amerika ini menjadi penting untuk kami bisa lebih saling mengenal bagaimana perkembangan yang terjadi di kedua negara dan ini akan menjadi modal penting untuk peningkatan hubungan bilateral antara Indonesia dan Amerika yang sudah dilandasi oleh kesepakatan mengenai Comprehensive Strategic Partnership. Dan yang kedua, kami juga memandang penting penguatan kerjasama antar parlemen ini dalam bentuk program-program peningkatan kapasitas baik di level anggota parlemen maupun level staff di parlemen nah sehingga agenda-agenda penting seperti transparansi dan pelaksanaan fungsi-fungsi keparlemenan ini bisa semakin meningkat kualitasnya yang ketiga kami juga tadi membicarakan tentang sejumlah hal yang menjadi uh, pertanyaan kendala uh, dalam peningkatan hubungan antara Indonesia dengan Amerika karena uh, kami melihat bahwa ke depan kerjasama dan hubungan Indonesia-Amerika ini harus semakin meningkat tapi juga semakin uh, berimbang Ya, kami di Komisi Luar Negeri dan Pertahanan di Komisi 1 selama ini mendorong kerjasama di bidang uh, militer antara Indonesia dengan Amerika tapi ini juga harus diikuti oleh uh, peningkatan kerjasama di bidang ekonomi di mana kami menawarkan Amerika untuk juga ikut berinvestasi mengembangkan industri uh, pertahanan nasional Indonesia yang kita punya sekitar 10 uh, industri pertahanan. Uh, first, let me let me make a couple of observations. It is clear uh, to not only the United States but I think to the international community that as Southeast Asia uh, is coming into its own, is becoming more and more successful, and particularly here in Indonesia where the you have a growth rate now of 6% a year. The GDP per person has expanded to almost three times what it was. Uh, the, the consequences of the leadership in Indonesia and Southeast Asia is focusing attention on this region. But the question for many Indonesians is what can be done to really put this country on the map for more trade and investment. And one of the things that is happening concurrent with our meeting here is that many of the diaspora, uh, Indonesian Americans, are here this week for Independence Day uh, in order to not only celebrate independence, but also many of them, in my conversations over the last few days, I find, are looking at investing in Indonesia. Many major businesses already are investing here. Uh, and in many industries. And we had a good discussion of how to encourage more. But part of that is to get the message out that the economic environment in Indonesia, with the rule of law, with the economic growth we've seen, with the uh, return on investment, is much higher, much higher than many other countries, most other countries in Asia. The other point that we are focused on is the fact that Indonesia is now the third largest democracy in the world and it is a success story. Yes, there are reforms that are still needed, just like there's still reforms needed in the United States, and we discussed some of that. But the reality is that Indonesia is increasingly an example to other countries around the world and around, especially in this region, in terms of the steps towards good governments and democracy. Now I'll add, uh, we did have a discussion about some of the foreign policy issues which I'm going to carry back to our administration, which we will discuss also with our Senate colleagues. 
but uh, there's one particular initiative uh, with the uh, United States Indonesian Society with respect to expanding our legislative exchange program so that we do more exchange between Indonesia and the United States. Part of that is a fellows program, a fellows program which will allow Indonesians to uh, work in the United States Capitol uh, and uh, work with our counterparts, our staff, some of who are here with us today. And likewise, we intend to have more interaction with Indonesia. And I wanted to thank Ambassador David Merrill for the role he has played in this. But uh, we want to look at institutional capacity building. Uh, and we want to look, look at what else we can learn from the success in Indonesia as we move forward. So that is part of our, our dialogue here, part of our comprehensive partnership. We very much enjoyed earlier today uh, the meeting with the president. Uh, and we've met with a number of other ministers uh, and uh, also have enjoyed sitting down with Indonesian American business community leaders who are in town this week. I want to share one other thing with you. My wife, Marie, uh, has had over 40 students. She's a, she was a professor in the university system in California. 40 Indonesian-American students. And she tells me that some of them were the top students in their, in their class. Yes. We're, we're trying to also expand the opportunities for students, trying to double the opportunity for the number of students who come to the United States in order to train and to learn and I thought uh, maybe David Cicilline, I should allow you to speak to that issue because you represent Brown University. <laughs> it's a great honor we made history today because this is the first time members of the Foreign Affairs Committee from the United States have met with their counterparts here in Indonesia. So it was a great honor also to do it on the heels of uh, your Independence Day celebration, which was wonderful to be here for that as well. Um, I just want to add my voice to what Sharon Royce said. This is an important relationship between our two countries. Uh, the reason we are here in a bipartisan way is, as you have heard from our president, this is a, a period in our history where we're really rebalancing or refocusing our attention on this important region of the world. And uh, we're here to really convey to you that that's not only the view of our president, but it's the view of the Congress in a bipartisan way. We understand the importance of this relationship. We look forward to working with you to deepen it both in the areas of trade and investment, in the area of human rights, in the area of uh, cultural exchanges. Uh, you have done some tremendous work in advancing efforts to eradicate corruption and a tremendous work uh, that you have done in the area of human rights and recognizing that you face challenges in respecting minorities and uh, ethnic minorities, religious minorities, sexual minorities and that as part of a very diverse democracy that you understand that the, the diversity is a great strength as it is in America. And we look forward to, to working with you as you continue to make progress on all of these issues and uh, fortify and strengthen this great democracy. And thank you for receiving us and we look forward to reciprocating in Washington. Yeah, the last thing. Jadi saya ingin tegaskan bahwa uh, ini adalah kunjungan pertama Komisi Luar Negeri Kongres Amerika ke Indonesia dan Komisi uh, Luar Negeri DPR. Jadi ini memang kunjungan dan pertemuan yang sangat bersejarah untuk menindaklanjuti kesepakatan mengenai komprehensif strategi partnership. Dan kami apresiasi karena mereka hadir di sini sempat mengikuti perayaan 17 Agustus. Saya kira kita berikan waktu untuk bertanya. Silakan. Was about Egypt, and the the goal has to be how do we get to a situation in Egypt where we have a government which respects and protects the rights of all Egyptians, and clearly uh, we have had great difficulty, uh, as you know, delegations have been sent to Egypt. Uh, from the United States and from all over the world over the last few weeks and last month in order to try to give advice. Uh, our hope and our counsel and uh, whatever leverage we can put into this 
is dedicated to try to get the parties back to the table for a political dialogue which will be inclusive, which will uh, uh, help resolve the tensions in which all factions in Egypt look at the long-term uh, long importance for Egyptians to be able to resolve this. Uh, and the, the, I think it's important that every nation that uh, can exert leverage uh, and uh, uh, can call upon the, the parties uh, to do so in order to try to, to end this violence uh, and get some form of cooperation going. Ya, saya Riko dari Sisi Indonesia. Saya mau tanya tadi sempat disinggung soal kerjasama industri pertahanan. The, I think the focus is on investment. Investment in every sector of the economy. And your question was also investment in the defense sector. But how do you encourage additional investment uh, in Indonesia? Because with prices falling for commodities, with some of this contraction that you see in China and with the result of the quantitative easing uh, being phased out, the consequences of that are interest rates are higher, so it's, it's, it's harder to get investment in the country. What can be done to attract that additional investment? And I think uh, that one of, the, one of the observations on our trip here is that because we have the evidence that return on investment in Indonesia is much higher than in other parts of Asia. That information needs to be shared with the financial press in the United States. We need to do more to get the information out about the success of businesses in Indonesia because that will attract more investment, not just from the large companies, but middle level as well. And foreign direct investment can do a lot to increase more economic growth at a time when there's some contraction in the region. Uh, and and uh, uh, I think that, w that the studies that are coming out now will help illustrate exactly what I have just said, that investments here uh, are, are successful, and part of it is because of the rule of law and uh, better governance here and also the emerging market uh, and the way in which it's emerging with about 60% of the economic growth uh, created by domestic uh, you know, uh, consumption. Uh, it's, it's a very stable environment as long as we can keep liberalizing trade and keep encouraging investment in the region. Thank you very much. Thank you.